Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at organic synthesis pathways. How you can get from one compound and then two or three steps later end up with something different. I'm going to take you through all the mechanisms, take you through all the reagents, all the equipment that you need to get there. Now this can be quite confusing because you're generally used to looking at one thing turning into another thing. And we're just going to be expanding that a little bit further. But there is nothing in here that you can't do. For the start of this video, I'm going to draw you a map showing you how to get from one thing to another thing. I would expect you to be able to reproduce this map, to be able to remember everything on this map and then to be able to use this map. For this video, the map's going to be over on one side so that we can refer to it during the video, but you're not going to get given this in the exam. You are expected to remember all of these pathways and all of the reaction mechanisms, uh, reagents and conditions that you're going to need for everything. It is worth spending the time redrawing this map or a map similar to this using your notes and your textbook so that you have this knowledge in your mind securely and you can access and use it during an exam. For this, we need to go from a primary alcohol to a primary amide. We're going to be taking propanol and we want to end up with propanamide. Now looking at our map, we can see that the first thing we need to do is to go from our primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid. So we can take propanol and we can turn it into propanoic acid. This is going to be need to be refluxed. If we distill it, we'll just end up with an aldehyde. And it needs to be with acidified potassium dichromates. From the carboxylic acid, we can then go to an acyl chloride, giving us propanol chloride. And then from our acyl chloride, we can go to our primary amide. In this one, we need a three-step pathway to produce propanoic acid from propene. And it is important that it is a three-step pathway because that's what the question is asking us to do. So we're starting off with our alkene and we're going to a carboxylic acid. Now you'll notice this can be done in two steps. Alkene to primary alcohol to carboxylic acid. However, we need it in a three-step pathway, since that is what the question is asking. Even we could go via an ester, but that is a slightly long and complicated way of doing it. There is an easier way to do it, and that is going via a haloalkane. So an alkene to a haloalkane to a primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid. To get from our alkene to a haloalkane, we need to add a hydrogen halide. Then from our haloalkane, we can go to a primary alcohol. For this, we're going to need aqueous sodium hydroxide. And then from our primary alcohol, we can go to our carboxylic acid. For this, remember, we're going to need to reflux it, not distill it. And that's going to be with acidified potassium dichromate. Compound A, which is shown on the left, undergoes three sequential reactions. Use the information given to name A and B, give the reagents reactions 1, 2 and 3, and draw the full displayed formulas for A, B, C and D. So for A, we need to give the name, which is going to be 3-bromo-2-methyl-propan-1-ol. We're told that it undergoes a reaction with sodium hydroxide and becomes a diol. The halogen group is going to be replaced with an alcohol group. This is going to give us 2-methyl-propan-1,3-diol. 
we are then told that compound C absorbs infrared in 1680 to 1750. Now this is going to give us something that's indicative of having that double bond with an oxygen. We know, or we can tell from the molecular formula, that it has two oxygens in there. And we are not changing the number of carbons. So while it has that double bond, the logical assumption is that it becomes an aldehyde. If it became a carboxylic acid or an ester, we wouldn't have the right molecular formula. To go from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde, we're going to need to distill it with acidified potassium dichromate. Now D has the empirical formula C3H4NO. Now we've already got two oxygens in our aldehyde, and from our aldehyde is a logical assumption to take us to a hydroxy nitrile. Now with a hydroxy nitrile, you add on a CN group. If we're adding on the CN group, it's logical to assume that the molecular formula is twice that of the empirical formula. Then we will keep our two oxygens. We will go from four carbons to six carbons, four being in compound C and two extra ones being added on from the reagents. Devise a two-step pathway for the production of 2-hydroxypropanoic acid from ethanol. So we are going to a carboxylic acid from an aldehyde, but it needs to be in a two-step pathway. And we can see we are also changing the number of carbons that are involved in this. So here we have ethanol, our aldehyde. And we need to increase our number of carbons by one. We need to go from ethanol, which is two carbons in, to 2-hydroxypropanoic acid, which has three carbons in. So we can't add two of them together. We just need to add one more carbon on somewhere. So to do this, we can go from an aldehyde to a hydroxy nitrile. There, we will add on our extra carbon, turning it into a three-chain carbon. Now, on our map, the hydroxy nitrile doesn't go anywhere, but it is actually only the nitrile group that we want to change to a carboxylic acid group. So we can't go, for on our map, we can't go from hydroxy nitrile anywhere, but if we look at the nitrile which is in the top right hand, we can go from a nitrile to a carboxylic acid. And for this hydrolysis reaction, we're going to need to reflux it with water and hydrochloric acid. We're now going to look at the organic synthesis map for benzene. Now I've got um, organic chemistry graph paper for you on my website because I know how tricky, annoying it is for hydrogens and you can download this, print it off and then you can cut it out and stick it in your notes as you want to. Like with the pathway map at the start of this video, you need to be able to draw all of these reactions, remember the reagents for all of these reactions and then use them in the questions that we're going to cover later is definitely worth you spending some time reproducing this map or using your notes, your textbooks to draw your own map. Devise a three-step pathway to produce phenylethene from benzene. And you'll see for these questions, we now have both maps over on the right-hand side because we are going to be using elements from both maps. So starting off with benzene, this needs to be a three-step process. So for this, we are going to be looking at both maps 
both organic synthesis pathways because we are going from benzene adding on a group and this group is just going to be an alkene. So the first step is going to be the acylation. We're then going to reduce it. What we've effectively made now is a primary alcohol. So we can now switch to our other map. And we want to go from a primary alcohol to an alkene. This is just a dehydration reaction, probably one of the first reactions you looked at. But combining it with the benzene pathway makes this a much more complicated, a much trickier question to work out how to get from one place to another place. Devise a three-step mechanism to produce N-phenylethanamide from benzene. The first thing we are going to do is look at that NH group. And then the next thing we're going to do is look at the other group. And you can see this is a little bit of a combination of two different things here. This may not be immediately obvious what you have to do. The first thing we're going to do is the nitration of benzene. Once we have nitrobenzene, then we need to reduce it. Once we have phenylamine, we can then look at replacing one of those hydrogens. And this is just going to be an acylation reaction. Devise a pathway to produce three bromophenylamine from nitrobenzene. So while on the map, we've drawn it doing the reduction reaction, then the bromination reaction, we are going to do it the other way around. The first thing we are going to do is take our nitrobenzene and do a bromination reaction. And then after we've done the bromination reaction, we are then going to do the reduction reaction. There is a reason for this. If we carry out the reduction reaction first, then three bromophenylamine will not be formed. It will form as a two bromophenylamine or as a four bromophenylamine. And the question specifically asks us to form a three bromophenylamine. An NH2 group is going to be two, four directing. 